In the last video, we looked at how the pelvic floor muscles work to control the bladder and keep you continent. We also looked at the type of incontinence and why doing your pelvic floor exercises is so important. Now we're going to look at some of the life events that can have an impact on your pelvic floor and weaken the muscles or injure them. We know that before pregnancy, around one third of women leak urine without meaning to. This often happens when playing high impact sport which involves running or jumping, such as tennis, basketball or football. This high abdominal pressure presses down on the bladder and the pelvic floor and it overwhelms the ability of the muscles to close the bladder and the urethra and so urine leaks out. In pregnancy, the hormonal changes, as well as the increasing weight of the baby and the mother, put extra pressure on the pelvic floor. This makes it even harder to control your bladder. After childbirth, there may be an injury to the pelvic floor muscles, connective tissues and nerves within the pelvis. This makes controlling the bladder and doing effective pelvic floor exercises much more difficult. Some types of births can make it more likely for an injury to the pelvic floor muscles to happen, such as an instrumental delivery where forceps or suction cup or vacuum is used. Another risk to the mother can be the large size of the baby and their new mothers are very busy and tired and this makes finding and doing pelvic floor muscle exercises very challenging. There can be other factors that put pressure on the pelvic floor. These might be being overweight or obese or lifting very heavy weights such as at the gym or if you're caring for an elderly relative. Respiratory conditions or smoking which makes you cough a lot more can also have a negative impact on the pelvic floor muscles as there is repeated pressure down on the pelvic floor muscles. Another cause can be constipation. This can put a lot of pressure on the bladder and straining at stool further stretches the muscles. Along with poor bladder and bowel habits, such as hovering over the toilet seat or ignoring the call to empty the bowel, all can further impact on the pelvic floor. And then around the time of the menopause, other changes to the body's hormones may also increase the likelihood of urinary incontinence. This is because the lack of oestrogen can thin and dry the tissues so they are less supportive of controlling the bladder. If you are watching this video, it is likely that you are aware of the significant impact that having urinary incontinence can have on your life. It changes how you feel about yourself, your working or social life and your ability to exercise. So have a think through your daily routine and see if you can identify what triggers your bladder to leak. Have you stopped playing sport or going to the gym? Have you stopped being able to jump on the trampoline or go to the park and play football with your children? Do you leak when you have a cough or a cold? And what changes to your lifestyle have you made because of the leaking? For example, have you had to change the colour of the clothes you wear to darker trousers? Do you know where every toilet is in the area where you live or shop? Have you stopped drinking to try and control the amount of leaking or started to wear a pad or a liner? Has it impacted on your travel or your holiday plans? Or is the incontinence affecting your job? If you understand a little bit more about what triggers your bladder to leak, it will help you target those triggers so you can use strategies and pelvic floor exercises to reduce or control those leaks. So in the next video, we're going to address what you can do to help treat or prevent your urinary incontinence.